Another example of that is what the student of Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, and he's no other than Ibn Qayyim in his book, Zad al Ma'ad. It's volume three, and it's page 302. 302. He said, concerning the Sulh of al Hudaybiyah, I don't have time to get into that, but the Sulh of al Hudaybiyah is when the Prophet وسلم, was going to perform the manasik, and the Kuffar stopped him, and he made an agreement with them. And the agreement seemed as if it was against the Muslims and for them. And one of the Muslims, Abu Jundal, he came and he was tied up, and the Nabi gave him back to the Kuffar. And it's a tremendously beneficial incident. Ibn al-Qayyim said about that incident of Sulh al hudaybiyah from the benefits of Sulh al hudaybiyah everything that transpired, he said, is that the mushrikeen, the kuffar, and the people of innovation, and the evil people of fajur, the fajr, the evil person, and the people of the valama, the oppressors, those people, if they are asking the Muslims to do something in which the hurmat of Allah is going to be respected, something that the religion supports is going to be taken care of, he said it's permissible to do that in the school, in the local school. Some of our children go to public school. In the public school, they want to teach our children sexual education. So the kuffar get upset with that and we get upset with that. And we come together with the kuffar parents to stop that. No one can say, hey, you're working with the kuffar. You're cooperating with the people of innovation. You're this and you're that. Because the thing that they're trying to get rid of is something that's universally accepted as being what's going to be beneficial is from the deen of Allah. I believe, I reiterate that a Sheikh Rabir, Hafidhullah wa Shafa'ullah Ta'ala, he went understanding that and knowing that. But now the issue is from the contradictions of the brothers on this corrupt minhaj, I never went to any talk with a Rafidi, I never went to a talk with an Ismaili. I remember I went to a talk a long time ago on TV. And on the TV, there were different people on the panel. It was not beneficial. It was a mistake. I went. The guys who were on the panel, they were asking the audience, who believes in magic? And they were Muslims. The program was Islamic. You can't ask people who believes in magic, who believes in a jinn. You can't ask those questions. So it was a learning experience. But I remember when I did that. And I was against those brothers, and they were against me. They made a big deal about that. SubhanAllah, I thought there was going to be some benefit. It was an ijtihad that I made, not that I'm a mujtahid, it was an effort trying to understand, give some dawah on the TV. It turned out to be not a good idea. But to say just because I sat with those people, then that makes a person an innovator? Why doesn't Sheikh Rabi become an innovator just because he sat with people who cursed the companions? who say that the Qur'an is not complete, who say that Abu Bakr and Umar are homosexuals, who say that Aisha committed zin and all of those issues. Now, if the person is not Sheikh Rabi and it happens to be an enemy, they're going to make you the one who's supporting all of the things that those people are saying. If their enemy went to that program with the same goal and objective, they're going to say, he supports the Rafida. He cooperates with this and that. He sat with Haytham al-Haddad. No, I did two programs in London with Haytham al-Haddad because those brothers were very organized and they had 6,000, 7,000 people who attended. They didn't put any conditions on me and I was the one who put conditions. I want to go first or I want to go last. And the talks that I gave are on the internet. Our dawa should be inclusive, not exclusive. Only the people are in here they're going to be Salafi, but you can't take the dawah anywhere else, just here. So you can go on the internet and watch a clip called Back to Basics. Back to Basics. When you look at that, if you do look at it, look at it from the prism of, from the prism of, the audience were all kinds of people. And I went and took advantage of calling to a Salafiya. The other time I participated with that brother and those brothers, was when they asked me to talk about some of the minor signs of Yom Al-Qiyamah. And again, I didn't see that yet. They didn't put that out yet. But if and when it comes, you look at that and you tell me. If you had an opportunity to go to a place, a church, a church, that people said, come in and tell us what you have to say. You're going to say, no, I'm not going to go? 
Zil Quran Masjid said to one of us, Brewis, come, we want to listen to what your dawah is. We're going to say, no, you're people of innovation, I'm not coming. Gumgul Sharif, come, give dawah. No conditions, no anything. The corrupt minhaj of SP is that they say, if you go there, you're sitting with the people of Bida, and the ulama and the salaf didn't do that. No, wallahi. Sheikh Rabi sat with people of Kufr and Bida. He sat with them. But he sat with them based upon the Dawabit of Al Islam. And if it's okay for him, it's okay for other people. Not like they're on the same level of him, but we take our ulama as examples. So it is a minhaj of Tanakh that, that double standards. What's okay for them is not okay for other people. Another example of that, Ikhwani, that I want to bring to your attention is that Ihya Turaf, Jam'iyat Ihya Turaf. I think it's really crazy, it's vuln, it's disingenuous for these brothers to continuously be obsessed with Green Lane Masjid. The Masjid of Ahlul Hadith, they're obsessed with Green Lane and what Green Lane is doing. Green Lane cooperates with an organization called BEST, B-E-S-T. They had an affiliation with Jum'iyah Ihya Turaf. In the past, they were working with Jum'iyah Ihya Turaf. Someone may argue this BEST organization is an umbrella group of Jum'iyah Ihya Turaf. No problem. So they're always saying, you work with them, Green Lane works with them, and it's a point of criticism. Now, I'm not here to defend Green Lane as such. Anyone who's fair and just and anyone who knows us knows that from the member, we advise the administration of Green Lane, and we don't agree with everything in Green Lane. Anyone who knows us, they know that we advise the brothers of Green Lane behind closed doors, and I believe that those brothers are competent, and I believe that those brothers have the interests of the community at heart, and Allah knows best. So I don't agree with everything that they do. I'm not here to defend Green Lane. I'm here to defend a Salafia. I'm here to defend the legacy of Ahlul Hadith, which Green Lane is a part of. No doubt about that. Are they the Ahlul Hadith on the level of a Sheikh Badi al-Din, Shah al-Sindi? La. They're not on that level of a Salafia. Wallahi. I mean, that's one of my issues that we say up and down this country. Some of these Ahlul Hadith masjids, they don't know the difference between Ahlul Hadith and a Salafiyah. That's a fact. But to call them and to look at them as people of innovators, innovation, to look at them like Brailwis and Dio Bundys, that's vul. That's vul. They're not like that, especially Green Lane. And that's why Sheikh will see Allah Abbas when he sat with Abu Khadija, hours upon hours. He said to him, Tell me what the problem is you have with Green Lane. He didn't bring anything. Sheikh was see a lot of bass. He's doing what we should do. Sit down and say to the person, what's going on? Tell me what you have. Hatu, burhanakum, and kuntum sadiqeen. He brought his proof to Sheikh, shot him down. Shot those proofs down. He didn't agree. And if you go on a website, I encourage you to do it. It's called roda.org. Under the supervision of our brother, Shadid Muhammad, there in America. He brought a translation of Sheikh Wasillah Abbas's latest advice to our brother Abu Khadija. My advice, I didn't really expect it to be taken because the advice of ulama, the likes of a Sheikh Wasillah Abbas, is just disregarded and thrown away. So why and how do I think my advice is going to be accepted? Rauda.org and Muhim. The point here is, you will hear SP and those people with SP giving classes to the Ammatanas in Manchester, in Birmingham, in Bradford, wherever they go, in London, and they're talking about Green Lane and Jam'ir Ihya Turaf. A Sheikh Al Albani refuted them. A Sheikh Rabi' refuted them. A Sheikh Muqbil refuted them. A Sheikh, a Sheikh, a Sheikh. And that's true. Many shiyukh and many ulama refuted them, and rightly so. They had the problem of going into politics. Like I mentioned before, Ahlul Hadith in Pakistan, when it went into politics, it 
became corrupted in a lot of ways. That happened to that Jamia. But all of them? No. Be vun to say that. Also, a Sheikh Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq, being the leader of that group in the past, he started to make some statements and take positions that were not praiseworthy. They were blameworthy. Takfir and other than that. So he was refuted, and rightly so. Is he Salafi, not Salafi? That's for whoever wants to research that issue. As for us right now, being preoccupied with that issue, and you making that from the asul of your dawah and, and engaging the people in that, it's not acceptable. So the point that I want to mention, Khwani, is for all of those ulama and tulab al-ilm who refuted jam'iya ihya turath, you should know this. It's not an issue of ijma. It's not an issue where all of the scholars are in agreement. And this is not playing the name game. And that's from their minhaj to mention all of these sheikhs who said whatever he has to say. It kills me. The people have the ability to memorize and read the Quran the way they recite and parrot off the names of the sheikh, dropping those names, it would be much more benefit to the community, to the shabab. From those ulama who know the condition of jam'iyat ihya turaf are the likes of a sheikh ibn Baz, a sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, may Allah have mercy upon them. A sheikh Abdul Muhsin, al Abad, who's living right now and he knows their condition. He allowed his son, Abdul Razak, to go to Orlando when I lived in Orlando and brothers came from Philadelphia and they participated in the program that was sponsored by Jum'i Ihya Turaf. And when the Sheikh Abdul Razak and other than him were giving classes, they weren't giving classes and dawah to his bia. They weren't giving classes to the bia. They weren't giving classes to Tanzim. They were telling the people that which benefits them. From those individuals that support them right now, gave them Tazki, a Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Khan, a Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Sheikh, the big scholar in Saudi Arabia. A Sheikh Saleh al Sheikh, the big Salafi scholar in Saudi Arabia. A Sheikh Muhammad al Subayil, who they say is with them, but the Sheikh is not with them. A Sheikh Rabi gave him a blazing tazkiyah, but he's not on that wound that they're on. He gave them a tazkiyah, as well as those other ulama of the Kaaba, a Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Sudais and a Sheikh Saleh Humaid. Now the point here is, Khwani, here the point is, to say that none of these scholars and none of these imams know the reality, only you know the reality and your sheikhs know the reality, but everybody else is ignorant of it, is unjust and it's not fair. And I can't understand, and this is the point here, this is the point. If you're going to criticize Green Lane, for cooperating with best or jam'iyah ihya turaf, if you're going to criticize Green Lane, then you have to criticize these sheikhs. And for you to say all of them, none of them, none of them know the reality. And it's not permissible for us to blindly follow them because they don't know the reality. We have to take the deli... Come on, this is... Who, who in his right mind is going to say that? Who thinks like that? The one who thinks like that is the one who can't see. All of those sheikhs, they don't know, they don't understand. Another issue, the cooperation of Jam'iyat, Ahl al-Hadith with Jam'iyat, Turaf al-Islami, Ihya Turaf al-Islami, is a cooperation in which Jam'iyat, Ihya Turaf, on our summer, on our winter conferences, during our winter conferences, they send ulama to us and talabat al-ilm. So if we're creating innovation and falling into innovation for cooperating with this Jum'iyyah, how can we have that ruling and the sheikhs who come to us don't have that ruling? They more than anyone should have the ruling. That's the contradiction and the double standard. We're, commu we're cooperating with Jum'iyyat Ihya Turaf al-Islami of Kuwait. How do we cooperate? Do they give us money? No. Do they tell us, praise a Sheikh Abdul Rahman, Abdul Khaliq, their previous leader. No, they don't tell us that. Do they tell us to do this? To the, no. They send us ulama and talabat al-ilm during the Christmas vacation. And we are responsible for organizing a conference for them. And that's it. They come and they go. Now look at this. Who came? As you all know. Scholars who are bigger than any scholar who ever came to Salafi Publications. 
like the sheikh who was from the Hayat Kibar ulama, a sheikh Sa'd ibn Nasir al-Shitri. He came two years in a row. He's from the major ulama who came. A sheikh Saleh Sadlan. Saleh Sadlan was one of the people who was given al-istishara, al-mushawara to the king of Saudi Arabia. He had a big position, knowledgeable man. Who comes to us? Who comes from this group? A Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Sathan. He came as well from the students of a Sheikh Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. These people came to us. Abdul Muhsin at Tuwajiri. These people, students of knowledge, came to us and we organize those trips or we organize those lectures. Now, what are the names of the lectures? What are the titles? Is the conference about Jum'iya Ihya Turath? Is the conference about the correct way of the Ikhwan al Muslimin? Is the conference about any of these Hizbi ideologies? I'm going to read to you just a few of the classes that have been given in the last three years at these conferences. 2009, a Sheikh Sadlan came, uh, a Sheikh Sadhan came, as well as Faisal al Jassim from the Strong Students of Knowledge, and a Sheikh Abdul Haq Turkmani who's living in Leicester right now. What were the classes? The name of the conference was called In the Footsteps of the Scholars. And the Turkis and concentration was about knowledge, the importance of the ulama, the importance of searching for knowledge, the benefits of knowledge, and so forth and so on. Listen to some of the titles. The Virtues of the Scholars, The Life of Al Imam Al Bukhari, The Examples of Differing, Why People Differ, and then another talk was the etiquette of having ikhtilaf and differing. The characteristics of the people of al hadith. What's wrong in this religion for us to cooperate with Jum'iya Ihya Turah that has been given the tazkiyah and they seem as being Salafi by a number of ulama of this ummah, past and present. And our cooperation is under the umbrella of what's from the religion. They come and they teach this. What's wrong with that? And the brothers from SP, they didn't endorse it. They didn't encourage it. They held their own conference in competition. They didn't encourage their people to come. They would have gotten benefit. Why did we come up with these titles? Why people have ikhtilaf and the etiquette of al-ikhtilaf so that people can come here and get benefit. We didn't come up with titles to hit them. The new Salafiyah, a jadida We didn't come up with titles like, like that. And Nawab the Jadida. We didn't come up with titles like that. We came up with titles encouraging those brothers, come. And not only that, Ikhwani, but when those sheikhs came, they used to be asked questions. Yeah, sheikh, this masjid is considered to be an innovative masjid. We talked to them about that in front of the people and behind the scenes. A sheikh, Saleh Sadlan, said, if anyone knows them to be innovators, bring me the delil, I'll deal with it. No one came. The next year, in 2011, Sheikh Sadlan came again, a Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Sathan came again, a Sheikh Sa'd ibn, Sa ibn Nasr uh, al Shatri came again, a Sheikh Faisal al Jassim came again. What were the talks about? Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. But because that Jam'iyyah sent them, you're telling us we can't cooperate with them and people can't attend and we're innovators? This is the unjust way of judging and ruling that is the decrepit minhaj of those brothers from Salafi publications. Double standards, tanaqadat, kalam and positions that are not knowledge based. They didn't study anywhere. Who from amongst those brothers actually studied? Not that Green Lane has ulama, we don't have ulama. But we have some people who went overseas and they studied and they came back with something. And that also doesn't mean that you brothers who are sitting here, you can't give dawah and you don't have anything to offer. You have something to offer and you can give dawah. They have something to offer, they can give dawah. But stay within your realm. We have to stay within our realm. This past year, 2011, last year, the name of the thing was called the Blueprint to Success, the way of Ahlul Hadith. The one before that, I didn't mention. It was called From Ignorance to Knowledge. This last one was called The Blueprint to Success, The Way of Ahlul Hadith. Who came? Again, a Sheikh Shatri, 
as Sheikh Sadhan. We had the new man, as Sheikh, the new Sheikh Abdul Muhsin at Tuwajiri. They came, and others since then. I don't have to go through all of this. The point is, what's the talk? As Sheikh al Shatri, he did the classic work of Al Imam al Tabari, Sarih al Sunnah. Where was that taught in this country by a former judge or a former member of the Hayat Kibar al Ulama? Where, were, where did that happen? Where did that happen? Now, the point here, uh, Ikhwani, is this. If those brothers are going to say that Green Lane are wrong for cooperating with this Jamia, Ihya Turaf, okay. But let your ruling be consistent and I have more respect for you. I don't agree with that, but I have more respect for you. How can you put that judgment on us and then don't put that same judgment on these ulama and mashayikh and talabat al ilm who are bigger than us? They are being sent by this jam'iyah. And when they come to us, they teach. And we translate and we learn. And we accommodate them for the greater good of all of the outer community. Not the exclusive group, just us. And that's it. And again, who did they bring the likes of these people? Who? We used to have the Mufti of Saudi Arabia doing telelinks on Saturdays. And those telelinks, we just asked them questions. That's all. We didn't want him giving lessons. We had a lot of questions, so we used to ask him questions. He used to give us the jawab on those questions. Who helped us with that? Jamia, Ihya, Turaf, and Islami. Are you telling us we're innovators for that? The Sheikh was cooperating with them. Why are we the innovators and the Mufti of Saudi Arabia is not an innovator? Because he doesn't know. Which brings me to this issue. And that is, a Sheikh Abu Usama will see Allah Abbas when he talked to those brothers at Salafi Publications and he sat with them for a long time, you know, it's really disturbing that the one who was blind, he can't figure this out. He makes all kinds of excuses concerning Sheikh Wasillah Abbas's position towards Anul Hadith of Green Lane and his positions towards individuals who they don't like. They find it very difficult to come to terms with it. So you hear some crazy things, contradictions and disrespect. Sheikh Wasillah Abbas, he said, for you people at Salafi Publications, Abu Khadija, for you to criticize Green Lane for this is unfair and is unjust. And that's because it is well established in the public domain that you yourselves, you get financial assistance from Kofar. You get financial assistance. The thing that the brother Abu Hakim had, the inner city, inner city program that he had, trying to help the community. Inshallah, Allah alam, inshallah, it comes under the same thing that Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. I don't know what's going on because I saw some stuff in there where there was kufr and shirk. I saw some cooperative efforts in there when I looked at it. It wasn't sanctioned by al-Islam. They're pushing some of the stuff. You're apologizing and acquiescing. But how is it that many of the Muslims, many of the Muslims, Salafi and non-Salafis, they receive welfare from these non-Muslims. Their food, their drink, their clothes, their nourishment comes from non-Muslims. Some of these satellite SP messages, mini messages, satellites, they take money from the government to prevent terrorism and extremism. That happens. Why is it okay for you to cooperate with Kufar, but it's not okay with us? Why is it okay for Abdul, uh, Abu Hakim? Why is it okay for him to sit as it has been documented with Sufis and all of these other people, but it's not okay if someone from Green Lane made that mistake in the past before the people who are in charge right now are in charge. You're still making us responsible for Salman Yaqub and what happened. That was the previous administration. A Sheikh Rabi, Hafidhullah wa Shafahullah, who I agree, he went to Riyadh and the religion supported him. There are some people they're not going to understand what I'm saying, but this is my seventh time saying it, okay? He said one of the signs of the Haddadis, a Haddadi is a term that you may have heard it. What is a Haddadi? There was a man who was a very strong student of knowledge who was with Sheikh Rabir when we were in the University of Medina. His kunya was Abu Abdullah Mahmoud al-Haddad. He was from Egypt. He made the tahqiq of some important books and his wife, Umm Abdullah, 
was a strong talibatul ilm as well. He fell into some extremisms in what he understood about as salafiyya He became very judgmental and very rough and tough. He started to say things like, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani is a mubtadi, an Imam al nawawi mubtadi, al-Bayhaqi mubtadi. He used to say things like that. Al Imam al Shawkani, he has bid'ah and he was tough. Fatul Bari should be burnt. These books that these scholars. So, Sheikh Rabi, he was the Sheikh of that man and he advised him and refuted him. But he broke off and he became a group, a mentality, an ideology that SP resembles in many ways today. Sheikh Rabi, he said, and this is the point. One of the signs of the Haddadis is if a Haddadi doesn't like a person, the Haddadi would accuse the person of doing something that he didn't do. And if the person did do something and he made a mistake and then he retracted and he made it clear that he's not on that mistake, the Haddadi will continue to make him responsible for that mistake and bringing that mistake to the forefront. That's a statement of Sheikh Rabi that he's well known for saying. And we find this is the minhaj of SP. That's from their corrupt minhaj. If an individual says something, I remember I said, I saw in Sheikh Rabi, I said it to a brother who I know personally. He wanted to know what happened in the Majlis. I wrote him an email. He asked me in the email, and I thought he was my friend. He's studying in Becca right now. And he became influenced by those brothers. And he wasn't influenced by them before. He said, what happened in the majlis? I told him I saw some things in the sheikh that don't allow me to follow everything that he's saying in this thing. And he gave that to those brothers when they put pressure on him. Now, I said that was the wrong thing to say. And I benefited from what he did. Because from a salafia is that we should have the utmost respect for ulama. We should have the utmost respect. Even if a scholar, this is hypothetical, even if a scholar were to do something to the student that the student didn't like, those books that teach you how to be a student, al-faqih wal mutafaqih, those books, they always have that chapter of, you have to have sabr with the sheikh, you always have to have good words for the sheikh when you don't agree with him, when you don't like what he did. That's how the companions were with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's salafiyah. The Nabi would give him money, give him money, give him money, give him money, and the companions wouldn't say anything. It would be the khawarij. It would be the munafiqeen. It would be the troublemakers who would say something to him negatively. As for the companions who we take our religion from, they were careful with the way they used to make the ta'bir and express themselves. So that thing that I said, I saw some things. I retracted that so many times. They're still cultivating the shabab that follow them, the blind shabab that follow them. And they attach this to us. No, it was a mistake. And I've been in it from... Don't be Haddadi in that regard. Don't be Haddadi in that regard. And I have to say the truth here. Our brother Dawood Adib, our brother Dawood